Now, we're going to welcome our first, uh, our first poet that's back up into the slam. <coughs> She's a timid beast whose iridescent energy surpasses human tangibility. <laughs> a friend, a carer, a believer. I could listen to her voice like forever yeah. on my iPod. And an awesome soul. Please welcome to the stage Rochelle the Silva. <laughs> or saw you or kissed you would be the last time, I would have held you longer, closer, harder, pressed against my memory like the roots of a 200-year-old sycamore trying to break free from the concrete pavements that line the streets of my mind. I would have remembered every color, every shape, every smile, every contour, every breath. I always wondered what they meant, those people who are scared to forget, always regretting what they've lost. I've never regretted a single moment shared with you, never held back and given you just enough. I've always known that someday you might walk away and not return someday. Not a faraway thought, but a real, constant, everyday feeling. One must always be prepared because anything can happen to anyone and because something is kind enough to happen to us. And greed is but the cause of all evil, so I don't want all of you forever. I want everything that you will willingly give me until someday you won't. From the first moment that I stole your breath, using your exhales to fuel mine, I remember the way your skin felt against the jagged edge of my elbow, the way my toes seek you out amidst blankets, the way I am spent in your presence, the way you make me glow, like some extraterrestrial life form with a secret that mere mortals cannot comprehend. <laughs> the way you make me want to sit back and observe instead of participate until we decide to crawl inside each other's heads again and wear each other's skin and sit still, barely touching and call it comfortable. Or even just fucking awesome. <laughs> I remember stealing your thoughts without your consent, watching you cringe when my eyes relayed your musings, almost imperceptible twitches that give you away the not so subtle, subtle fluctuations of my cornea and my brow and my stupid expressive face that gives me away for watching you cringe now. Because we do not have control over everything. And as much control as I have given you, I do not give you control over this. I cannot let you decide what you can and cannot do to me and how much and for how long because I am perfectly capable of carrying you. Like a woman walking through a desert with earthen pots stacked on her head, staying steady, walking strong, balancing pain and need and want and desire against her flimsy neck, mm. bursting and crying for more because she knows the value of an earthen pot and I am perfectly capable of carrying you with me into my tomorrow because whoever thought that you and I don't fit, or fit well, or look great together, or weren't meant to last, or are fooling ourselves, they're all wrong. <laughs> because you and I, we're not up for speculation, we're not the byproducts of someone else's conjecture, of someone else's approval, or lack thereof, and this is the best idea that I have had in my 52-year-old existence. So if H and we and dementia won't destroy us. <laughs> what makes you think you can? <laughs> 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 